you say, this is after you got out, you say, uh, to be in my physical body in the physical world again was like being newly born. I had to learn to use my hands in a new way, for seat belts, cell phones, to close doors behind me, to push buttons in an elevator, to drive. I had to relearn how to walk downstairs, how to walk with, without leg irons, how to sit without being shackled. It took about a year for my body to relax from the positions I had gotten used to holding while being restrained. I allowed myself to eat when I was hungry. Gradually, over two years, I let go of the grip I had held against feeling pleasure. I held against feeling pleasure, and of the unconscious fear that I would lose everything I loved. Can you talk a little bit about um, coming out? Well, being in solitary, uh, it's all about routine. Yeah. And one of the routines is you're never allowed out your cell without having. Uh, Restraints on your on your hands. You know, they either uh, chain your hands to your stomach or to your side, and having on uh, uh, leg irons. And you know, leg irons you can only you can't have a full gait. You know, it's kind of like a shuffle uh, the way you walk. You know, and so you know, uh, I had to live amongst a family. Although I had support from my family, I not lived amongst uh, you know, a family. I hadn't lived in the house. One of the things I did do when I was released is, uh, you know, one of my brothers lived in Houston. And, uh, and I called him my rock because in 44 years, uh, he never missed a month visit, mm -hmm. you know. And his name is Michael. And so uh, we talked and he said, well, why don't you come stay with me? And, you know, my sister-in-law and, and you can learn about what it is to live in a house, live with your family, and you know, all these things I have been denied for so long, you know. And so that's what I mean when I say I had to learn pretty much how to be a human being again, you know, because I had been treated like an animal, even though I wouldn't accept that treatment. There were certain things I had no control over, you know. Uh, it was 20 years before I was able to touch my mom when she visit, or hug my hug or touch or my sister or my brother when they visit, you know, and so uh, I think my biggest adjustment was, you know, uh, uh, CCR or closed cell restriction is solitary confinement, and it's a cell with bars, it's not a complete contract, and that's what unique, and so I've always had to just for, you know, Four decades plus, I had to just defend the front of my paws, mm -hmm. you know, my, myself, you know. So when I got out, and, you know, so much publicity about the A3 or angle of tree and stuff. Yeah. So when I went to events, I felt extremely uncomfortable with people moving around, because mm -hmm. I had never had to deal with that, you know. And a lot of people know you, they read about you, and, and they actually think they know you. So I had a lot of people yeah. coming up behind me, bear hugging me and slapping me on the back. I showed you, I mean, you know, the yeah, best yeah. intention, but you know, in prison that could get you killed. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, that was my biggest, uh, my biggest disappointment was, it took me about three weeks to realize nothing had changed in Angola. That racism, mm -hmm. uh, individual, institutional and a system that make application of racism was the same, was very much a part of the Bible of this country, that the only changes were mostly in technology, mm. and the social changes were mostly superficial. Mm. You know, they had found new ways to, to use the N-word, yeah. but the meaning was just as, as, as evil and just as, as, as uh, you know, destructive as, as it was uh, when I left. And that was, you know, really a disappointment, you know, because my, you know, King used to use the term that to a frog, the world is no bigger than the opening of a well. And so my, although I, I, you know, I knew about what was going on in the world, I knew about the change, I really had no experience with it until I got out. And it made me so sad, but it also made me question myself, you know, because I'm like, are you looking at society right? 
or is this really how it is, or is this, you know, maybe some suppressed anger or something that's dictating how you, you see in society, and then Donald Trump come along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I pat myself on the back. <laughs> right. Is there anything that you miss from inside? In a strange way, you miss the camarad camaraderie, comrades, you know, you know of, uh, guys you live around. I mean, you live around someone, uh, you know, for decades, uh, you know, and you only get, you know, an hour, one hour a day to say hello or to see them when you come out and you're on your way to the shower, you know, and stuff, you know. So you develop, you develop some real close bonds, you know what I mean, like Charles Nolan. Uh, you know, who I taught how to read and write. The first man I taught to read and write. Uh, my mom was functionally illiterate. She could only read or write her name. And people who can't read or write develop certain defense, you know. And so I was able to recognize in him from the observer of my mom, you know, really coming up in the family. And uh, so one day I just asked him, you know, and he eventually, you know, uh, admitted it, and I said, well, I, we can do something about that. You know, I, I, if you want, really want to learn how to read and write, I can teach you. And so he wanted it, and, you know, my mom used to always tell me that change is 10%, 100% desire, 10% doing it. And I, you know, explained to him, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to run behind you, but I will be there for you no matter what time of night or day, you know. And he put me to the test too, you know. <laughs> he used to call me like two, three in the morning, you know. <laughs> How do you pronounce this word? You know, I use a dictionary, and you know, at the, in all dictionaries at the bottom page, there's a, a, a pronunciation of keys and how a word is, is, you know, sound as to how it's spelled and stuff. And taught him about, you know, uh, you know, vowels and adjectives and how to shape and form his words and stuff, you know. But he wanted it, you know. Mm -hmm. it, so in six months' time, he was reading at a high school level. You know? mm -hmm. So, and there were so many other men after that, you know, uh, you know that we taught to read and we taught the history. I mean, when we were, were te teaching uh, black history, they were like, they had no idea the role that, you know, black people played in the development and the advancement of society, not just in America, but in the world. Mm -hmm. And they had no knowledge of, 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 you know, the only image they had of Africa, the image that you see in movies and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, uh, that was, yeah. you know, played a great role in helping, you know, uh, us to save some of the men uh, mm -hmm. that we lived around. Yeah. Uh, let's 